Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's Ryan. Sorry, I'm not showing my face in this one. I just want, got the camera set up and I wanted to go ahead and start filming this. It's about a week before, thank, not Thanksgiving, oh my goodness, Valentine's Day. So I wanted to do a few more Valentine's decorated cookies to show you guys. So this one, as you can see, is just a little rectangle. And I wanted to make these little envelopes. So this one's kind of a multi-part um, decorating. So I'm going to go ahead and get started on the first part, set it off to the side to dry while I'm doing the other pieces. So yes, I am recording. That is important. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and do, make sure it's focused, just do an outline here. And my cookie dough got a little old in the fridge. So I'm not going to be eating these. I'm just doing them for the video. As you can see, it got pretty cracked. And I'm just going to go over this line one more time. So I'm just doing the outline there. And then I'm going to go and do just for the top fold portion. And I'm going to fill this part in. Some of you commented on my last cookie video and were had very nice things to say, so thank you. But you can go over your outline a few times. Don't panic if it is not perfect the first time. So for this part, I am just going in and I'm making this as full as possible. And we're going to come back in later and fill in the bottom part. But this is going to make it to where the two parts of it are a little more distinguishable. Sorry. So I'm just filling that in. So now I'm just going to set this off to the side and let this part dry. All right. In my other video, I showed you the hearts in multiple sizes. So in this one, I cut two different size rectangles. These are more like little bite-sized pieces. So if you wanted to do like little bags with smaller cookies in them, these would be perfect. So I am going to do these the same. Make sure you can see. So I'm just going to do these with the little flat part on the top too. I think those are super cute. I'm gonna put a little heart on them. So I'm just doing the same thing here. Filling this top part in. Y'all, I'm doing this from the side so my lines are pretty off. But we're getting there. And my cat is down rubbing on my legs, so. And she's begging for attention. So I'm just going to go in and make the top part here pretty straight. And then Cody's in the other room trying to get the cat in there. So there we go. I'm gonna set this one. Ooh. See how off that is? They're not all gonna be perfect. So I'm just gonna set this one off to the side. Be careful not to touch the lines with your fingers. You can use a, let's see, I don't even know where I put it. You can use like a little offset spatula to pick them up if you want to. Okay, this one is going to be another envelope, except this one is going to be the front side. So I'm just going to do the entire thing white and just fill the whole thing in. So I like to hold the bag up off of the cookie so that it's a little easier to get nicer lines that way rather than holding it directly at the cookie. And right there you can see I messed up. So I'm just going to go back and fill this in. Make 
the line straight and then I'm just going to go and fill the whole thing in and you can go in with your little tool and make those corners super crisp. The hole in this back should have been bigger. I need to get my scissors. You don't want to go too large when you're cutting the hole, but you also don't want to go too small and it takes you forever to fill the cookie in like this. This is taking forever and my bag is not very happy with me right now. So filling this in. And if you have not seen my other Valentine's Day cookie decorating video, you can go watch that. I might do a couple similar cookies to those on here. So like I said, I'm just going to go in, make those corners a little more pointy. Just got icing on the tripod. So there we go. I'm going to set this one off to the side to dry as well. Okay, and y'all saw in my other video, well, my cookie cutout video, how I just kind of create my own cutters if I don't have exactly what I want. So in the last one, I made a um, strawberry cookie just by drawing a strawberry on a piece of paper, cutting it out, and using that to trace out the cookie dough. So in this one, I wanted a heart that had a little bit of a deeper top portion. So I went ahead and cut one. It wasn't this exact cutter, but something similar to this and then used my knife to cut here and just like pulled it apart a little bit to give it that deeper portion. Okay, so for this one, I'm gonna do red. And some of y'all also asked in my last video how I got my red icing, so deep red. So this is the color that I used and I can link it. Either use super red or red red. And you wanna make sure that you get the gel paste. If you are trying to use the liquid like you get at the grocery store, it's A, going to make it way too, um, your icing is gonna be way too runny, and it's gonna take like an entire bottle and you're still not gonna get it as red as you want. So make sure you get the gel. Like I said, I will link that down below. This is a larger bottle, but it does take quite a bit. So I like to have that one on hand. You can use it for red velvet cake or whatever you want to use it for. So I'm going to ice these in red. And I am using some bags with couplers and tips. And then I'm also using the tipless bags for no other reason than I just wanted to do a video using the tips as well because not everyone is going to have tipless bags and I have tried to use a regular bag without putting a tip in it and oh, the part of the bag that's at the bottom where you would cut ends up having a little bit left over and it always wants to drag. So if you're gonna try to not use tips, you do want to buy the tipless bags. So for this one, there's a little bit more up here. And again, you can, it's, this icing is fairly forgiving as long as you get to it in time. So I don't want this part to run down. So I'm just pulling that icing down here away from that area. Yeah, that looks good. So I'm going to take this and just set it off to the side so it can dry. I'm gonna do another one with this one. I'm just going to do it red and I'm going to try a technique that I've always wanted to try for the first time 
on video, what could go wrong? Everything. So I do not have the top of my bag twisted enough. Hopefully, yeah, you can see. And I did have someone comment on my other video saying that they had tried stacking their cookies a little too soon before the icing was dry. You do want to make sure that you let your icing dry, I would say for 12 hours. So don't put it in an airtight container yet. Let it completely dry. I made the mistake of um, putting some of my cookies the last time I did them in my oven because I wanted them to stay safe. Like I said, we have cats. They don't get on the counter, but just to be safe, I put them in our oven. And apparently the oven is more airtight than I thought it was. And the cookies, the icing kind of crystallized on top. It didn't have that nice, smooth, shiny surface. And then the colors bled because there was just too much moisture. So make sure that you let your cookies dry for a good amount of time before you put them in something or try stacking them. We are just gonna go all out with the red. I only made, well, two colors other than white for this video. So I'm just gonna do this one red and then we're gonna do a wet on wet and do the lines. This one is a much smaller cookie. So just fill it in nice and full with this icing. And have your tool, whether it's a toothpick, you do not have to have one of these, or a little, I used to use like a little pin, because when I had my shop, I would use the pin to hold ribbons on a cake. So I always had those and that's what I always used. Like a pin, like a sewing pin. And then I'm gonna go in with another icing that is the same consistency and I'm gonna do those lines again. You can see that it just sinks down in there and then we're gonna go over it with our tool. And you're just gonna swirl back and forth. I may have put these lines a little close. We will see. That looks cute. So anywhere that you want it to blend a little more, just go back in. I'll come down. Try to go in the same direction if you can, just because it helps the continuity of it. There. Okay, I also wanted to mention something that I had talked about in one of my other videos about like writing on whether it's a cookie, a cake, whatever. So up here I have a piece of paper where I just wrote out love. And then on top of that, I have a piece of wax paper. And I just have this on a sheet tray for the sake of this video. But I taped the wax paper down. And this is a great way to practice your writing and get better at writing on your cakes or whatever you're writing on. So you can just take your icing Normally I would use buttercream, but obviously I'm using royal icing for this video. So that's what I put in a bag. And you're just gonna go over this, over and over. Something like this, you will need, like to get the different thickness in your lines, you'll just use different pressure. It's hard to explain. Let's see if I can turn this a little bit. So, I always have my other hand here to study it. You don't have to, but especially if you're starting out, I would recommend that because your hand will likely be kind of shaky. So you're just gonna go over this and trace. If you don't go all the way, but it is what it is. It might not be perfect, 
but you're just tracing what you already have. And then because you put it on wax paper, this is red, so it might not be as forgiving, but just, sorry, I know that noise is probably horrible, but just scrape it off and start over. So just go back in and do the same thing. And just do that over and over. I put on the other end, I did just a little happy birthday. We'll see, this is a fairly large tip here. It's a three. So I may have written this a little small, but same thing. Just go over it and trace what you're doing. Yeah, this a little, I wrote this a little bit small for this piping tip. But just do this over and over until you get comfortable enough with it. And it's a little, it's bleeding together as you can see. But just do this over and over until you get comfortable with writing. And then you can write on a cake, write on a cookie, write on whatever you want. Okay, this is the first cookie that we started with. So it's a little hard to tell because of the camera, but this part up here has, it's already started to harden a little bit. So it has kind of a film on top of it. And that is what you want before you add on your second, not necessarily a layer, but before you add on this part down here, you want to make sure, whoop, about to lose some of the icing. You wanna make sure that you have that film on that part so that they will not bleed together. So I need to cut this hole a little bit bigger. So we are just going to go in and you don't want this part to overlap. Just push it against it a little bit and you can use your tool to get up even closer. And you're just gonna fill this part. I'm probably gonna do this part a little less full, if that makes sense, so that you can see the definition between the two. And you could start with the bottom if you wanted to, and then do the top on top of that. Because whenever you seal an envelope, this part is obviously on top of this part. So make sure you are going in popping any bubbles. There's a little bubble right there. And then I'm gonna pull this up over that outline a little bit. Just make it look a little more clean. Fill this part in, I have another bubble over here. lots of bubbles in this video. Last one I didn't have very many to pop. And you just keep stabbing it until you get the bubble to pop and then move it around until you get that peak that you sort of made while trying to pop the bubble to go away. And if, if it starts to look like it's gonna dry fast, just stop touching it. So now I'm going to leave that alone and set it off to the side. And then I'm gonna get the smaller one that I have done and do the same thing with it. Okay. So I'm just going in and filling this part in as well. And then you're gonna want this part to harden just a little bit just like you did the top before you add what we're gonna add next to it. This will help your colors, keep your colors from bleeding. And this is something, if you wanted to stop here, just to make sure, because we're gonna be putting red on top of this, if you're unsure, 
and you want to make sure that your red does not bleed, just go ahead and wait until, if you have the time, wait until the next day. Wait until like the next morning and put it on. Okay, so I'm gonna call that one done. Put this off to the side. And then we're gonna get this one back out. And this is the one that I said I was going to do a technique that I've never done. So we're gonna try it on video for the first time. If it doesn't work, might not make it to YouTube. We'll see. So I keep seeing ones where the top is crackled. So what you do is you let it dry a little bit, at least from my understanding. You let it dry a little bit and then you come in with like the tip of a paintbrush or like this. And you just, nope, this is not quite dry enough. Coming back for that one. Okay, so as you can see, while I was not recording, I kept trying this. So I think it is finally at the right um, set point or whatever you want to call it with the top where it is hardened enough that it's going to give that kind of cracked texture. It's, like I said, this is the first time I've done this. This is not what the videos that I see look like. Maybe they do something else. You could put this in front of like a little fan. I have like a little personal fan. You could put it in front of one of those to make the top harden a little faster. I don't know. Maybe I'll have to do a little more trial and error before I try to show people how to do it. Not terrible. Yeah, it looks pretty terrible on camera, not gonna lie. Um, yeah. But you know what? I'm not gonna edit this part out because this is real life. Sometimes it just doesn't work. Okay. Well, that was a fail. Let's just knock it off the cutting board. So now the envelope, the bottom part of the envelope has hardened a little bit more. So I'm gonna go in with a thicker consistency icing with the red. And I am going to put a little heart here where the seal would be. So just like in the other video, you're just gonna do a lot of pressure and pull a lot of pressure and pull. So you have a little heart. And I'm just gonna go in and pull the bottom down to a little more of a point. There you go. And then I'm gonna get the other one, oh, the little one that I did, and just put a little heart on this one. So just do a little tiny pressure and pull. Okay. And now I've got the one where I just did the plain top. I'm just going to write because these are Valentine's Day so letters of love whatever you want to say I'm just going to write love across it and put another little heart Let's see there we go and I'm gonna go kind of diagonal across Oh, that was a little rough, y'all. You can go back over it. And then we're just going to put another little heart up there. Okay. So we have those three. This 
little one. And then just our plain little heart. So that would be a cute little mix of cookies for your Valentine's Day. Hopefully you liked watching this. Give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit subscribe so you can see all of my future videos.